Tiene la palabra por dos minutos y medio el señor Legutko, en nombre del Grupo de Conservadores y Reformistas Europeos. Uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, dear me, what a bellicose language not heard in this chamber for decades. The EU institutions have been notoriously pro-Russian and stronger words were usually suppressed by the big men in the European Parliament and the Commission. The unpleasant fact is that there is not much that the EU can or will do about Russia. The EU has neither instruments nor will nor a common foreign policy for that matter. During the Ukrainian crisis the EU representative uh, did a lot of traveling but she could as well stay home and watch television. The job was done by the representatives of national governments. Of course what they did was uh, uh, too late, too timid, and they were soon overtaken by the events. Today it is clear that the belligerent rhetoric is no longer palatable to the powerful uh, European governments and will soon change. Chancellor Merkel is not happy with this war of, of, this war of uh, words and longs for good old days of business as usual. Other European governments think pretty much the same. The present outburst of a moralistic rhetoric condemning Russia, not the first one and not the last one in recent history, is one of those episodes that will soon pass into political oblivion. What will most likely happen is a tacit agreement between the major Western players and Russia legitimizing her imperialist interest in the Crimea and elsewhere, and it will not take long before this chamber will be praising Russia for her self-restraint and a generally stabilizing role. The European countries will ultimately side with Russia, not against Russia, with the strong, not with the weak. This is what the Euro European politics has been like for centuries. Whoever expects something entirely different is bound to be disappointed. The book of Ecclesiastes had it just right. There is nothing new under the sun. Gracias, colega. Tiene dos minutos para su intervención.